Happy New Year! Year. <laughs> We're so excited to be here. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024. January so 1st. exciting. Yep. Wow. I even got my new calendar up this I morning. Saw that. Yeah, sometimes it takes me several days, but I thought, oh, they're going to notice that I'm on December, so yeah. I better switch it and out. And if you said 2011 or 2012, people might think it's a really Well, even that's true. They might. The yeah, it's good to update the calendar. That's okay. right. Well, we're very happy that um, all of you are here with us this morning. We, and should, we should mention who we are for people that are getting... That are new. If you're getting our video on some kind of suggested basis from YouTube... We are Tom and Tammy of NutmegNotebook.com, whole food plant-based lifestyle blog, YouTube channel, Facebook, and Instagram page. <laughs> wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. She's the brains, I'm the technical brawn, as it goes, and I wash the dishes. So You're very good at washing dishes. Yes. And because our dishwasher was broke for the last week and a half, you've got a lot of practice at yeah. that. And, and if you're watching the chat feed, you'll see a lot of blue wrenches on screen right now. We do have our moderators with us. We've got Gina and Jesse and Randy. Wow. And I haven't seen Tiffany pop you in You know yet. what? She is making brunch for 45 people oh, this she's morning. she's a New Year's Day thing. Yeah, she is a busy lady yeah. this morning. We so. also are having a New Year's Day event. We are, we are uh, hosting our grandchildren today. We so. are. They're going to be here. As soon as we get off, I have to call. And yeah. tell Mama that she can yeah, we're, bring we're them have, over. Yeah, I don't know what it means. We're going to have our version of Boxing Day, <laughs> taking down and putting away the Christmas decorations. I Is think that that's, that means? that's different than what Canada. I think it's a big sale or something in Canada. Somebody from Canada, tell us, what is Boxing we Day? We could Google it. But anyway, it made me think of, okay, today is the day to take down the... the uh, decorations and get them boxed up mm -hmm. so oh here i've got to shut the sound off on this okay I and i'm gonna, I'm gonna step bit. over and do a sound check if you want to let the folks know what we're going to be up to this morning um sure yes we've missed you uh it took me a long time this morning to refine all of my studio gear <laughs> and and set all this back up uh so i'm hoping the sound is working and I'm, I'm hoping the lighting is good uh, i did find the cameras after some searching they had gotten all the way to the back of the kitchen drawer I almost came looking for you to find out what you did with them. I hadn't done anything with them as like yeah. intentionally I just anyway. Made one more little effort. I'll just look one more time in that drawer. Oh, and I am I am the finder in the house. Always have been between Tom and our children. If something was missing or misplaced or what have you, mm -hmm. um, Mom could always find it, and that is still true today. Yeah. Yeah. She's generally. I'm a more, good detective. She's generally more aware of her surroundings and I tend to be kind of in my head thinking always about something else than what I'm actually doing. Uh, you could call that advanced planning and a sign of intellect, but, uh, or you could call it not paying attention. I'm not sure which is more applicable. Wow. So anyway. Very philosophical today. All right. Well, so anyway, you can ask us questions in the chat if you would like. So we just ask that you would preface the questions with three question marks and end with three question marks. That just helps the questions pop out at us. And you will notice that Randy, Jesse, and Gina can answer questions. They can post links in the um, chat. So they help us out with um, your questions as well there. They have all been whole food plant-based for a long time, and they have a lot of knowledge to share as well. And they've been with us for a long time, and so um, they're very familiar with the content that we have. I guess I'm talking to the wrong camera. You switched cameras on me. Um, they're very. That's why I put this monitor right here so you <laughs> right. can see where we're at. I'm out. I'm out of practice. Um, but they also know our content well, and um, so they're very helpful in the chat and um, we appreciate you guys being here today thank you so much so it is a new year um, tom and i have been talking about the new year and um, what that means for us as many of you know we have been on a bit of a sabbatical for a while and uh, we are looking forward to getting back into the swing of things with the plant-based community and um, we're hoping um, uh, the title said, um, should we do more in 2024? And we kind of want to talk about that a little bit. We're hoping that each day in the new year brings us 
and you new opportunities, new exciting adventures to broaden our horizons, and many new moments of joy to fill our hearts. As we all know, life is short, um, and you know we want to make the best of every day. That really resonates um, with us since losing my uh, father in October. It's made us look at uh, what we are doing, how we're spending our time, and how we want to adjust some things as we move forward. And so we've made some decisions as well in our personal and professional um, life on what we want to do differently in the new year. So of course we want more joy. We want um, to have fun and we want to spend um, more fun time with our grandchildren. And um, we also want to get some rest though because um, we get to be a bit of workaholics. And so we want to be able to have some downtime, recognize when we need that downtime and not feel um, bad or guilty for taking some downtime. And then we also want to get more movement in. We didn't get a lot of hiking in last year. And so we really want to work on that and try to get more um, hiking and outdoor adventures in. We feel our best when we are connecting with the great outdoors and moving our bodies. And um, that just helps us be um, more proficient in everything else that we that we do. I love to listen to a podcast called The Hidden Brain. It's on um, National Public Radio. You can just go to hiddenbrain.org and you can listen to their podcasts. And there were two that I listened to just recently, which of course are very timely because of the time of year. One is called What Would Socrates Do? And the other one is called How to Believe in Yourself. And again, this is called Hidden Brain. It's on hiddenbrain.org. And um, I listen to it on my local cap radio. Um, it's a national public radio uh, podcast and it's wonderful. So if you have an opportunity to listen to those two, it's a lot about um, behaviors and goals and um, why sometimes we aren't good at putting those goals um, in into actions. Oh, I see Rich is here. Hey, Rich. Good morning. He says they were going to go hiking, but it was too muddy down by the river. Yeah, with all the rain that we've had, and now we're having fog this morning, a lot of moisture. It makes it a little more um, difficult to get out there. I hate to slip and slide in the mud. Tom likes to actually, he likes to go hiking when it's raining. Um, I don't like getting all muddy, but it doesn't bother him at all. Also, we are curious about what you guys would like to see um, in our content in the coming year. When we did our live walk and talk, uh, I think that was on Christmas Eve, I think we did that. Uh, we asked people to send us suggestions for what they would like. We've gotten some lovely emails and some uh, comments on Facebook with some of your suggestions about what you would like. People are requesting like a, a cooking classes or a cooking show kind of thing where um, either you can, it's pre recorded and you can take it at your leisure and learn how to make some things, or maybe a Zoom cooking class where you would get the recipes ahead of time and then you would get to cook along with me. So if you're interested in anything like that, then please send us an email, Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com or Tom at nutmegnotebook.com and let us know that you would be interested in something like that. 
Um, we would like to know what you'd like. Um, somebody else said they would like to see grocery hauls. They might be new to us and don't know that we've done a lot of grocery hauls. So if you look at our YouTube channel, you will see we do Costco, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, but somebody said they would like to see us do a grocery haul at a regular grocery store. And we don't usually shop at just like a Safeway or a Rayleigh's or something like that because we find that we get the best prices and can find what we want at those other three stores. But that doesn't mean that we might not take a trip into um, a Rayleigh's, a Bel Air or Safeway here or Winco Foods even here locally and um, show you what we can find there as well. So let's see what else is going. Um, so we would like to hear your suggestions and hear what you would um, like to see us do. That would be helpful for us as we move forward in the new year. And um, I want to talk a little bit about um, habits. So we went to Chef AJ and Charles last night. If some of you were watching the um, video, she texted me when we were on our way and said, I'm on a live right now and they'd like you to come on and say hi when you get here. Would you do that? And I said yes. And that was really fun. So just the last few minutes we got to step in and chat. And they were talking about um, how important the environment is in your house, which was something that I was going to be talking about with you guys today and about goal setting and that kind of thing. So um, Tom and I have been whole food plant based. It will be 11 years in March. So we are very close to our 11th year mark. And um, the reason we have had success is that we set up our house to have an environment that helped promote the lifestyle that we wanted to to live and so that meant you know getting all the crappy food out of the kitchen um, we shared last night we put a lot of uh, granola bars and um, oh, what cliff bars and some snacky things that Tom had out in a cabinet in our garage because I didn't want to walk into my pantry and see those things and even he forgot about them once they got out of the kitchen and we ended up throwing um, most of it away because it just it, it expired so that out of sight out of mind really does work I kind of like to think of my kitchen my refrigerator my freezer my pantry as a um, a commercial or a billboard for the lifestyle that I want to live um, you know commercials and print ads are very effective. That's why the um, companies that make things spend so much money on advertising. You know, if you see the commercial long enough, eventually you're gonna wanna try that product. Well, it's the same in your house. You know, if you are surrounded by junk food or high calorie density foods that aren't going to help you achieve your health goals, eventually you will probably succumb. You know, Chef AJ says, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. And many of us have found that to be very true. So, um, so part of being successful is, you know, setting up your house so that uh, what you see reflects the type of lifestyle that you want to live. And then you have to work on your habits and create new habits as well and um, they talked on hidden brain in the those two programs what would so uh, socrates do and how to believe in yourself they talked a lot about um, the exploring the unconscious patterns that drive our human behavior and you know one thing is that people think that when they set a goal that the path to getting that goal is linear. It is not. It's more like this. And sometimes you might have to take two steps back before you can even take one step forward. That, you know, that that is just a normal part of the process. Um, so if you have a squiggly line or end up doing a U-turn, just know that that is super normal. Um, you know, there's a joke, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. 
Well, that is so true when we're trying to adopt a new lifestyle and adopt some healthy habits. And I happen to be a perfectionist and perfectionism can really get in our way. Um, it causes us to obsess about the little tiny details. And then, you know, if we're not able to meet the daily requirements that we've set for ourselves, then we might just give up because we're not being perfect out of the gate. It narrows our area of growth because if we aren't immediately good at something, we can um, decide to just give it up and not try because we think that we have to be good um, at the very beginning. And also perfectionists are master ruminators. This is so me. And ruminators, perfectionists ruminate on their failures, what didn't go right, rather than what did go right. And so having the self-knowledge about yourself can be very, very helpful if you are trying to establish some new habits. They say that self-knowledge is the key to how we can flourish. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we think what we think? So it's kind of like the, you know, the um, little, is it the little engine believed he, he the, the little train, the little engine that could. If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you're also, you're right. You won't be able to achieve it. So if you think that you can't lose weight. Now, why all the other thousands of people in the whole food plant-based community can, you know, eat this way and lose weight, but you can't, you know, you have to um, ask yourself, you know, why do I believe what I believe? And really think about why you believe what you believe. Because if you are holding on to old beliefs, then it's very difficult to establish new healthy habits because you don't believe that those new healthy habits are going to help you achieve, uh, achieve your, your goals. So you have to be open to new ideas and new possibilities, and you have to challenge why you have the thoughts that you have. Um, that, and this is like, so important. I run into so many people who tell me that, you know, well, it's genetics. I mean, I'm, I'm borderline type two diabetic and my, my dad or my mom was uh, type two diabetic. So it's just genetics. There isn't anything I can do about it. Or I have high blood pressure. It's genetic. There isn't anything I can do about it. Well, those of us who've been in the plant-based community for a long time know that, you know, genetics load the gun, but it's our lifestyle that pulls the trigger. And so um, we have to challenge those beliefs that we have in order to be able to move forward and establish some new healthy habits. So, you know, if you go to the refrigerator every day, as soon as you get home from work and you stand there and are staring at it and then start snacking, you know, you need to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is it because I'm tired? Is it because I'm frustrated? You know, um, why, why do I do this? Don't let those bad automatic habits keep going. You have to challenge them and um, in order to be able to change them. And our brain is hardwired, you guys, to take the easiest path. Just like we are hardwired to seek out the highest calorie density foods for the least amount of effort, also we are hardwired to take the easiest pathway for the least amount of energy in all of our choices, food choices, exercise choice, whatever it may be. We will always default to what we have always done. And maybe what we have always done is not the healthiest thing until we create new habits. And our habits are habitual. 
Um, and in the beginning, we have to be really intentional about creating new habits. They say if you can attach a new habit to an already established habit, oftentimes that can really help you to um, establish that new habit. So for instance, Tom decided, and it was interesting in one of these um, podcasts, um, one of the speakers was talking about what she had done and it was something that Tom had done some months ago. So Tom had decided, you know, in his 60s, he really should work on his balance um, because losing some of your ability to balance well is what leads to falls and broken bones. And so what he started doing was when he's brushing his teeth with the electric toothbrush, it runs for two minutes. And so one minute he balances on one foot. Yeah. I switch every three seconds because the, here I'll jump on. Yeah. And this. Tell us what you do. Yeah. So yeah, this came out of um, a discussion with my doctor when I went in for my first 65-year-old Medicare visit, and, and the, main, the main topic of that, it wasn't about blood work and anything like that. It was, do you have any rugs in your house that you can trip on? It was all about balance and not falling down, because mm -hmm. that's the worst thing that can happen to a senior is falling down, because then it's downhill from there, I guess. Right. Anyway, um, yeah, electric toothbrush, every 30 seconds, you know, it's 30 seconds per quadrant, and so you get four distinct little time windows. And so uh, when I had a bad back, there was a physical therapy exercise where you put your stand on one foot and you circle your other leg out in a, in a sweeping arc from the in front of you all the way to back and, and behind you. So I alternate that every 30 seconds. So each leg is getting two doses of balance. And you know what? At first it was hard to do. I was like all over the place. But I tried it yesterday. It's not easy. I right? had to go over and hold and hold like and and put my hand on the counter a little bit. Yeah. So, but now I do it with flourish, like I'm a ballet <laughs> yes. master. I put my leg out behind me. I go for a full extension. Uh, it's a riot. And so, when you're in there doing your hair, and I'm doing that, I'm actually just showing off for you. Oh, yeah. is that it? Yeah. Oh, you're like yeah. a little bird displaying yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm getting <laughs> exercise, and I'm getting my teeth brushed. It doesn't get any better. I know it's great, right? Okay. All right. And but you took a habit that you had already established, brushing your teeth, and then you attached this new habit to it because otherwise. How are you going to remember every day to do that balance right. for two minutes? And so it doesn't take you any extra time no, not. because you're doing it at the same time maximizing that my you're brushing your teeth. Yeah, maximizing my return on time investment regarding health-related activities. Yeah. Healthy, and so, healthy teeth, healthy ankles, not falling down and breaking my hip, staying alive. There you go. So on the, on the podcast, the professor that had started doing that, she said um, an unintentional consequence of her doing that is that after months of practicing her balance while she was brushing her teeth with her electric toothbrush, she realized that every time she picked something up and just held it in her hand, if it was a pen or an umbrella or even a small tote bag, she just automatically started standing on one foot, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, she said, just, you know, it's just, that is what yeah. happens. It just becomes a part yeah. of your life. Uh Bodybuilder Rich is, is in the chat. He'll appreciate this. Yeah. When I turn on the water to, uh, to warm up a little bit, not a lot, we don't waste a lot, we waste a little bit in the shower, I automatically go to the bathroom counter and I start doing, you know, 45 degree, I call them counter presses. It's like a, a, a push up, uh, but I'm doing it against the counter to exercise these upper muscles. So I turn on the water and I and go, automatically and, do and that. I go over and I do mm -hmm. 20 of those counter presses and then I go and get in the shower. That's awesome. So, yeah. So that's another one of those things that just developed is a doubling down on time and and being strong. So anyway. That's good. That's All good. Right. I'll well, you, can, you... you can join me if you wish. Well, I don't know where you are. Oh, I... I'm just, I'm, well, I was just going to say, so. I've been in the chat, so. Uh... Okay. So be, if you are trying to establish some new habits this year, you have some goals, um, it's better to focus on the habits that are going to help you achieve those goals 
<clears throat> than it is to just have that goal. You can say, oh, well, you know, this year um, I want to walk 10 miles a week. Well, you have to establish and set some um, things that you can do. You have to be intentional about it to make that happen. So you, you have to say, well, I'm going to walk, you know, um, I'm going to go for three, three and a half mile walks or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you have to be intentional. You have to have something concrete that you're going to do. You need to write it down and then follow through. If you have a week where you don't achieve it, don't give up. That's okay. Remember, the path to your goal is not linear. It's going to be like this. And that's okay. Oh, that was in that podcast this morning. There, yes. They talked about your, your path to success is not, the, it's, it's like this. I shared the podcast with yeah. Tom this morning. And, and what that made me think of, because we, we saw this on a YouTube the other day. Um, there's a, a particular bike ride I like here locally, and it's about a 700 foot oh. incline. Mm -hmm. And the last, the last mile is a pretty good grade. It's, it's the highest for those of you in the local, it's, it's a, a bike ride to the highest uh, uh, ridge in the city of Rockland. And the last bit is pretty arduous. And when we first started out, we'd have to like get off the bikes and walk up, walk up that last bit. But now I, uh, it's a fairly quiet residential area at the top of the hill. And I do zigzags, you know, it's a, it's a four lane, you know, two lanes one way, two lanes the other way no traffic. So I've got two wide lanes and I will zigzag my bike in low gear back and forth because it's so much more achievable to take the less incline by zigzag. That, made me, that podcast made me think of think how of that. I zigzag my way to success, to the summit. I still have not been successful like you riding all hill. the way up. No, I it's always, a grind. I always I'm, have to stop and get off and walk my but bike. But have you zigzagged? I have not you zigzagged. You have not zigzagged. But you know, I don't like to be out in the street there's no i would block the cars for you <laughs> zigzag your way to success that's my motto oh i like that i mean you know there's merit there's merit in that okay so so just like tom with his balancing while he's brushing his teeth and you know like we weren't born you know with the instinct to brush our teeth twice a day and to floss we learned how to do that and created a habit in order to be able to do that. So we know that we can create new habits that eventually just become part of our natural life. And so that is what we have to do. Um, they were saying in the podcast that we learn what we live. And so in the beginning, you may have to act as if, act as if you are an athlete, act as if you are a good cook, you know, you fill in the blank. And I heard this many, many, many years ago that a therapist said the most powerful, powerful sentence she could teach her clients is act as if, and then you fill in the, the blank. So act as if I'm going to be positive, act as if I'm going to be active. So I should act as if I'm, it says on this cup, <laughs> intelligent, handsome, and more fun than normal grandpas. Uh, see also legend, hero, and super cool. So I act as if all those things were true. And absolutely. That drives me forward. That, absolutely. And then that yeah. is who you will be. Yeah. This, this is my grandfather's uh, cup from my, my daughter and her family. Yeah. So. so every time you put it on that, it makes a clink. That's why I gave you a coaster, babe. The things that we do a lot become the things that we do naturally. So practice by being the person that you want to be. Are you going to be 100% per perfect at that every day, the whole year? Absolutely not. None of us are. There's some days that, like Dr. Lyle says, some days we have B minus days or C plus days. We are not going to be A plus all the time, and that's okay. It's what we do consistently not what we do occasionally that's going to have the biggest impact on our progress, our um, improving our health, getting us to our healthy weight. So it's what we do consistently. So if you have a day, a two or two, or oh, even a week 
at some point in time that isn't stellar, that's okay. Yeah, if you if you succumb to having some hummus and eating a Mary's cracker on a Tuesday, <laughs> it doesn't ruin the whole week. It's just one Mary's cracker with some hummus on a Tuesday, and then you go on to Wednesday and be on track. So, right. I mean, that's not the worst th thing that can happen, a piece of hummus on a Mary's cracker, but you don't need to think ill of yourself and that you failed as a whole food plant-based individual eating as much unprocessed as possible. Right, exactly. So some of the things that, that we established um, years ago when we first started was um, I was reading Dr. Furman's books initially and he recommended having one salad a day as your main meal. And so I started doing that and then Tom thought, well, those salads looked pretty darn good. Would you make one for me? And so then I started making them for him as well. And so every day we would have those big, beautiful salads full of wonderful starches and beans. And we and used to make them up at the, each day. Yeah, we That's used the ones to, where we used to pack them into the, before we started chopping them. We had our big bowls. Yeah, yeah. we weren't chopping them yet. We didn't start chopping them until we had met um, Chef AJ and mm -hmm. I saw her make a chopped salad one time. So, um, so we've been doing that for going on 11 years now and at first, you know, it's just like when you're learning how to drive a car, you have to think about every single thing that you're doing. And, you know, I've got to, let's see, I have to put my foot on the brake. I have to turn my key. Well, now it's push a button, but, you know, years mm -hmm. ago it was a key. Um, now you can just push a button and start it. You know, you'd have to think, I have to turn my turn signal on. I have to slow down. I mean, you know, you'd have to think about every thing that you were doing. Well, now we just get in the car and go. We don't even have to think about it. It's the same when you're establishing new eating patterns and a new um, lifestyle. So it, first you have to be very intentional to create those new habits. You have to think about them, you know, and it seems laborious in the beginning, but eventually it just becomes a normal part of your life. It's kind of like learning to do more without having to do more. Mm. And stuff just becomes built in, you become hardwired. Yes, absolutely. That is very true. And then it just becomes a natural part of your life. So, you know, after all these years, now we just don't even think about what's for lunch. We know that lunch is our salad. We know when we go to the grocery store exactly what we need to buy to make those 14 salads for the week. We don't even have to think about it. It's just, we're on like autopilot. It just happens. And you know, if you give yourself time to establish those new habits, then eventually, you'll just be able to do it without even mm -hmm. having to think about it. It's, a, it's like, it's like a no brainer now, mm -hmm. how we eat, how we cook, you know, what are we going to do when we travel? You know, at first you have to think about everything, but eventually it just becomes easier. It's like learning how to ride a bike or play an instrument or, um, learning how to play a sport or whatever it is. Um, it's challenging at first, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. And then if you do slack off of something, you have to kind of relearn like I did this morning on the setup because my, because I hadn't set up for several weeks. So right. I had to, to uh, I mostly refine everything because it had gotten jumbled in the closet. Yeah. So we are our best when what we want to do and what we are inclined, inclined to do coincide then that is when we are at our best but we aren't going to get to what we are inclined to do just by wishing it we actually have to be intentional and create yeah, those okay. habits what's the difference between wanting to do something and, and being inclined to do something well you could you could have said well i really want to work on my balance i i want to make sure that i retain my balance well, you can't wish yourself to retain your balance. You had to take an action in order to start that process. Okay. You know, I can't wish that, you know, um, I'm a good piano player. 
I would need to take lessons and practice mm -hmm. to become a good piano player. If I want to, um, you know, um, walk four miles a day, when I first started walking four miles a day, I could only go 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so at first, I just started working on the amount of time. I went 20 minutes until 20 minutes got easy, and then I upped it to 30, and then 40, and then 50, and then I got to an hour. And so then I started working on my speed because I thought, well, I don't want to walk longer than an hour every day. And so then I started working on my speed until I got up where I could do four miles. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and so I couldn't wish myself to do that. I had, had to take steps to do that. Right. What do you have to add to that? You were inclined to get out and walk, and then you improved on the walking as you went. Right, right. right. But you have to be intentional. You know, you can't say, oh, you know, I want to lose weight. But then you don't do anything, you don't change anything to achieve that. Or, you know, I, you know I'm borderline diabetic, and I don't want to have to start taking insulin shots. Well, you have to do something then mm -hmm. about that. You need to change the way you're eating. You need to incorporate exercise, um, whatever it may be. So um, let's see what's going on in the chat. Yeah, we've been, Tammy's been kind of presenting. So if you have a question for Tammy, I haven't um, noticed any like question marks going by, but if you want to bring a question up about something or start a discussion on a subject, give us three question marks in front of it. That'll kind of jump out at us. Yeah, so Lori's asking about what about recommendations for whole food plant-based podcasts. And so, um, well, certainly you should be watching Chef AJ's YouTube channel because every single day she interviews people from the whole food plant-based community. Um, it could be cooking segments, lots and lots of different doctors that are in um, different areas. Specialty areas of self-management. Dr. Yes. Lyle comes on fairly regularly about right. personal management. So not a podcast, but oftentimes I will just listen to YouTube channels while I'm um, out walking. I'll just put my ear pods in and listen yeah. to them there's or the while beat, I'm cleaning or the, while I'm cooking. The Beat Your Jeans uh, yep. podcast. The Beat Your Jeans podcast is um, really good. That's Dr. Um, Doug Lyle, and that's really good. Um, anybody else have any recommendations for um, podcasts? I believe that um, Engine 2 has a podcast, um, but I can't think of what the name of it is. Mm -hmm. So if you guys know of podcasts, if you could just put them in the comments, that would be um, really, really helpful. And um, it looks like Rich is helping people with, um, he's our resident bodybuilder. And so it looks like he's helping people with ideas in the chat for exercise, um, which is really um, helpful. So thank you so much, Rich for doing that. If you want to we talk about what's going that. on with the books, I'll scan the chat real quick. Okay, you'll scan the chat. Okay, so um, we have um, two online courses that can be very helpful for you. Um, even if you've been doing this for a while, people still write to us and tell us how much they've learned. So the first online course that we have is our beautiful chopped salads course. And in this course, you will learn how to batch prep salads um, like a pro. Uh, I show you how we batch prep 14 salads in 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, that is 14 meals, seven for me and seven for Tom, that are done for the week. That is actually half of the um, meals that we eat because we don't eat breakfast. We do what's called intermittent fasting. So uh, our first meal of the day is usually around 1230 and that is our big beautiful chopped salad that we make. And so then um, we have a smaller meal later in the day in the evening. And so in this, we show you how to prep it, how to chop it, 
uh, why we chop it because it tastes better it reduces the overall volume of it and it just is incredible when it's chopped and then we show you how to top it so you get a lot of recipes you get a, a whole lot of um, ideas on different toppings for the salads it comes with videos and a downloadable pdf which you see here and it's full of recipes and color photos and i think there's i think there's 25 different salads so because people say oh my gosh after you know 10 years of eating a salad every day you know aren't you sick of salads and we're not because oh my gosh you guys there's so many different ways that you can top them and flavor them and they're just incredible so we are um, extending our 30 percent off on our courses if you use code nutmeg30 you will save 30 percent that's a new code if you're looking at it at an older if you're video an old email or an old video i did nutmeg 30, 30 is um, the new discount code nutmeg 30 and you'll get 30 percent off it's a video course if you just go to tom will put a link in the show in the show notes as well as in the comments for you um, people have told us that once they started chopping their salads they became salad lovers and that they didn't love their salads beforehand and um, it makes them easier to chew for people who have dental issues and um, people have also told us that their kids or their grandkids like the salads when they're chopped they don't like them when they're not chopped but there is something about chopping them that makes them more appealing not only do they taste better it reduces the volume but um, they are just so much more appealing they're easier to eat and absolutely Absolutely delicious so you get the PDF you can print it if you want or you can just have it on your smart device on your laptop your computer your iPad um, I have it on my iPad as well but I'm one of these people who still likes to thumb through recipes and so I do enjoy having it printed and then some of my favorite salad dressings are also included in there and then the other course we have is batch cooking with Tammy and um, this, this book is just over 100 pages. It has 50 recipes in it. I believe there's 16 of them that aren't um, located any place else. Like they're not on the blog. They were just made just for this book. And in this book, I teach you how to batch prep so that you're not spending all of your time in the kitchen. Batch prepping is just making more food than you can eat in a day. And um, I show you how I batch prep. Chef AJ calls me the batch cooking queen. And so I go through, I show you how to organize your spices, your pantry, your refrigerator, your freezer, and then how to work smarter, not harder in the kitchen. This one has 32 videos that you can watch at your own pace. And then you also get this um, PDF that you can download and you can print if you want. We actually took ours to Staples to have it printed, which was an expensive way to do it. But you can get either one or both of these courses for 30% off using code NUTMEG30. Um, I just wanted to share with everybody what I had learned and what I wished I had known uh, 11 years ago when I adopted this lifestyle. If I had known about batch cooking and how to batch prep salads and how to chop salads, it would have saved us so much time and it would have saved me so much anguish over like how to sustain cooking everything from scratch long term. But here we are um, almost 11 years later and um, doing well and being very successful at this. And if you're new to our channel, I lost almost 50 pounds. Um, Tom lost 30 plus mm -hmm. pounds. And um, we have been able to maintain our weight loss because we established healthy habits daily and weekly. We learned how to batch prep so that we always have healthy food ready. Tom calls it our fast food. Um, because you know we've always got stuff in the refrigerator or the freezer or the pantry 
that we can quickly put together to create a meal. What would you like to say? Oh, were you going to give them a sneak peek of what we got planned for next year? Okay, so just so you don't think that we've just been sitting around relaxing all of this time, we have diligently been working very, very hard on a new ebook. And so you're going to show them the cover. The, the, yeah, this is still in the software. <laughs> yeah, it's still. We're still working on it. In fact, our daughter will finish editing it today. Our daughter was a high school English and Spanish teacher, and so she volunteered to be our editor. And so it is called Cooking for Company, easy, plant-based, entertaining. Um, our daughter Katie also said, you know, she was helping me come up with ideas for the title, and she said, well, we could call it, oh my gosh, Company's coming. I have no idea what to fix because when you adopt this lifestyle, those first few times that you are going to be cooking for people who don't eat like us, it can put you practically in panic mode because it's like, what am I going to fix? So what I what we did for um, this ebook is I created menu plans. So it's a menu for entertaining. So it's a menu for one meal. And um, I've coordinated the recipes because people say, you know, well, if I made your chef. Well, there's 10 of them, though. It's not yeah. a menu for one meal. It's 10 meals. It's 10 meals, yes. 10 different menus. Um, and they can be for, you know, cooking for your family. They can be for um, cooking for company. When company comes, you, you know, can use it for ideas to take something to a potluck if you want. But people say, you know, like if I make your shepherd's pie, I don't know what would I put with it. And so um, I'm taking the guesswork out of it. And then I also give you a, a, a plan. So for you know this particular meal, what can be made in advance and frozen, or what can be made a day or two ahead and kept in the refrigerator, and then what do you need to make that day? And so, um, so we're very excited about this. I think it's going to be something that's going to be extremely useful and helpful, helpful for people. Um, and so that will be coming out um, in about two months yeah i think yeah in about two months so you know we'll keep you informed on what's happening with it and we're very excited we've been we've been working eight and ten hour long days on it for weeks and weeks and weeks and um so we're super excited about that so that is coming up yeah. and um we also we have a, a cruise that we're going to be going on in February. We're going to go see our friend Shada in Southern California in a couple of weeks. So we're very excited about that. And she has um, Cooking Healthy with Shada. So check out her YouTube channel and her um, Facebook and Instagram. And she, she specializes in Persian food, but she makes everything. And she's a really wonderful um, cook. And if you saw recently, I posted the recipe for the um, crispy um, spring rolls that you make with the rice wrappers and then make them in the air fryer. Well, she was visiting us one time and um, we got this idea to do that. So we walked over to Safeway and bought the stuff that we needed and came home and I don't know, it was like eight o'clock at night. We were making those and they turned out fabulous. And so they're gluten-free, oil-free, crispy and delicious. And now I'm like hungry for those. Mm -hmm. They sound so good. Um, and so, and then in February, we're going on a cruise. We're going to the Panama Canal. Um, this is one of the National Health Association um, sponsored cruises. There's 24 of us from the NHA that are whole food plant-based going on that. And they, the ship, um, the chef on the ship is making us oil-free, salt-free, sugar-free, whole food, plant-based food. Um, we've actually worked with him before on another mm -hmm. cruise. So we're very excited to be going on that. And um, then when we get back from that, we got a lot of stuff going on Yeah. At the beginning of March. And then sometime after that, um, we do hope that we can do some, some form of on online 
cooking class yeah. and you had, uh, um, pick with up you guys. A series that you and Sia had planned as well. Yes. The intermittent yes. fasting series. Yeah. Well, no, it's not about intermittent fasting. It's about a lot of different topics of, okay. that Sia and I want to do. So, so yeah, we have a lot of things that will be um, coming up. Somebody, I saw somebody in the chat said, I really liked it when you guys did a live show every week. Um, we are not going to commit to doing that at this time um, just because that, that's a really big um, commitment and we kind of want our schedule yeah, to one, be free. Yeah, one of the things that we wanted to do more of is that we've had a lot of requests for uh, recipe specific, shorter, what they're, what YouTube calls uploads rather than a live that we will film something, edit it down, have it be kind of our sweet spot is 12 minutes or less uh, to to present a recipe, go through the preparation. And, you know, Tammy does a great job on that stuff. Uh, so so we will still be doing lives uh grocery hauls we were just talking the other day that grocery hauls are a kind of a fun thing to do because we had to go get groceries anyway we've got to bring them in the house anyway <laughs> we got to put them away anyway it's kind of like doubling down on our time right so if i can if i know we're gonna you know be shopping i can throw up some of the studio stuff here and we can be ready to to go through um when we get home. What we bought and why we bought it is what Tammy does a good job of explaining. And a lot of folks have told us that, that they appreciate the information sharing because, well, even in the chat today, Rich said that he knows about the tofu that we buy at Costco from oh, one of our hauls. Nice. That that's his go-to, that four-pack. Yeah. So people learn what's available in, or you know, hopefully organic, whole food, plant-based food sourcing. Yeah, we, won't do, we won't do those but, every week, but maybe once a month. We can do yeah. um, a grocery yeah. but haul. But we want to get more um, content up this year that helps people achieve their whole food plant-based goals. So right. um, anyway. That's good. Um, I, I, don't, I can't remember who, but yeah. somebody said they liked my hair. So when I go get my hair cut, my stylist always likes to make it um, curly rather than, you know, I like to blow it out smooth. Mm -hmm. So... So somebody I usually else, blow somebody it else asked if uh, if there was a before picture of me. We have looked for those, uh, you know, in our searching for stuff for this for this new ebook. I did find that one. It was like a birthday celebration downtown, and you and I are together, and it's it's only like from here up, but my face is like pretty big. Oh, you did find a before picture? And only from like here up, because like you and I, you and I are both. We went to Zocalo's for a, somebody's birthday. Okay. I think mine, and. And, and I look, oh, wow, I'm pretty full in the <laughs> face there. So usually on, you know, family photos and stuff, I'm behind the camera. So I'm just not in very many of them. And so, you know, there's not much material to work with. Oh, so for your before picture. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to... There was that one... We've got to go through our it, picture pictures. Yeah, there were... Our, well, that... The, rather the, than digital pictures. Well, the time frame right before I retired, though, was when I had the, was carrying the most weight, like mm -hmm. at my retirement party and stuff, there were some photos there, but it's full of other people. Oh, well, but, we'll have to look at them and see what we can separate yeah, so. out. Um, let's see. Sharon says, I must be doing something right, Tammy, because I do follow all the YouTubers that you mentioned. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, Rich says that he likes the chopped salads. They're easier to eat and take up less room. Yeah. And it used to always yeah. be hard to keep them fresh. So we got a few minutes left before we're, we're, our target is to be done by 10 o'clock. So if anybody has any last minute questions, you'll want to throw them into the chat pretty quickly. Yeah, and um, I just want to say, I know a lot of people who live in the colder climate say, oh my gosh, how do you eat salads in the winter time? Well, here's the beauty of the, the salads. Like sometimes I will make it into a hot taco salad. So I'll either take my beans or my lentils, I'll season them with Mexican spices, cumin, chili powder, garlic powder, that kind of thing, um, or salsa. I'll heat up the beans, either the rice or the oat groats. Um, I made cheese sauce yesterday, so today it's totally gonna be a Mexican salad because I've got all the goodies to make a Mexican salad. So black beans, I have oat groats, I have cheese sauce, I have frozen corn. I'll take all of that, heat it up, add some salsa to it, and put that on top of my chopped salad. It's no different than, you know, I used to order um, 
taco salads in restaurants and you know they would have the hot meat if you will that would be put on top of it you could also do it with tempeh or with um, baked tempeh or baked tofu if you want and that's really delicious my hearty lentil vegetable stew i love that heated up and put over the top of a chopped salad. It is so good. If you have a chili, you can heat up your chili and put it over a chopped salad. So, and then another thing I do, because I don't have, my, my batch prep salads are not full of like spring mix or um, romaine. I used to make them with romaine, but now we use kale, spinach, arugula. Everything that's in our, batch prepped salads can be heated up. Mm -hmm. So um, I will take and throw extra onions and I'll throw mushrooms in my skillet. I'll saute those and then I'll add all the contents of the chopped salad. So if it's a cold and rainy day, I take that chopped salad and I turn it into like a stir fry. Now you've got me wanting one of my Mexican hot salads. <laughs> Because you haven't made that in a while. Yeah, I do. Have, I, we have those big two-quart bowls, and I hollow out a place in the middle, like like an upside-down bunt cake. We have a we have a video on that. We do. We do. I think we do. I think we have a video of you making that and showing people. Oh. And you heat everything up and put it in the middle. What do we call it? I don't know. Is it Tom's chopped salad? I don't know. I think we have a video. Okay, I might want. I might have to have that for lunch today. <laughs> I'm it gonna, sounds I, good. I'll go find the video. I, I remember how to make it. But, yeah. but I microwave, I do the greens and I microwave them for just a minute and a half just to take, take the, the chill off, off of them. Yeah. And then in the middle is the beans and the rice and the corn. I dump them in there and with the cumin and my favorite salsa and whatnot. And, and then that is a hot salad. So enjoy it. Okay. Annette says, I'm following Tammy's method for roasting garlic today. That's awesome. So you guys, I have on the blog is a um, blog post on how the to... The non-explosive method, right? Yeah, the non-explosive. Shh, <laughs> you have to tell everybody. Um, the How to roast garlic without any oil. And Tom's talking about the non-explosive method because one time, I think it was on Thanksgiving, why on earth I decided, oh, I'm going to try to air fry the garlic to uh, roast it quickly well and i had left it you know in the the skin and put it in my air fryer and it exploded and so here i am trying to pull off making thanksgiving dinner and i have exploded garlic all over the inside of the breville smart oven air it was quite the mess and you were so sweet you helped me clean it up um, and it really smelled like garlic. So I have perfected a method of doing it in the oven. I don't air fry it. I do it in the oven and it does not explode and you don't need any oil. And it turns out beautiful. And roasted garlic is very rich and mellow and buttery and so delicious. And I like to add it to my hummus or my salad dressings. And it is so yummy. Yes, let's see. I want to see if I've missed anything else. Uh, Margo is making Shada's Lucky Black Eyed Pea Soup today. So that would be on um, Healthy Cooking with Shada. So she has the recipe should be on her website, Healthy Cooking with Shada, or she shows how to make it on her YouTube channel as well. Um, I'll be making kid food today. I'll probably be making baked tofu and um, some other, you know, things that are kid friendly because the kids are coming. Um, we've been spending so much time during their Christmas um, break working on the ebook that we haven't gotten to do as many fun things with them as we like like to do. But prior to um, Christmas, I did make gingerbread houses with them. We did gingerbread cutout cookies. Um, we also got together and we made um, vegan chapsticks. Uh, next year, I'll try to do a video on that. You use essential oils and those turned out great. And their, um, their mom made uh, labels for them and they gave them to all of their friends. And so that was really fun. Here, look, um, look at what I found. 
Uh, Barbara says, will oh. you be posting this as a replay? I missed most of it. Yes, as soon as we're done, Barbara, um, the replay will be available to watch. And so you will get to see it again. Can you suggest a salt replacement? Lori says, yes, absolutely. So um, one that is available on Amazon is called Benson's Table Tasty. You also can purchase it directly from them. Um, and that's Benson's Table Tasty. Then from Well Your World, which we have a link in the show notes for Well Your World. They have um, salt-free seasonings, and so check them out as well. We love the Well Your World products. We do have an affiliate link for them, and um, they have two salt substitutes as well as a wide variety of salt-free seasoning mixes that are incredible. And then from Local Spicery, which is a small company here in California, and we're friends with the proprietors of that. We also have an affiliate link to theirs, and um, theirs is called um, Salacious. I had to stop and think. Salacious, and it is also very, very good and it is a salt substitute and they make it themselves in small batches and it's delicious so we like all three of those also if you just use a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice that can help kind of mimic the tartness our, our salt um, taste buds and our sour are close together and so if you have something that's a little bit sour that can kind of trick your taste buds into thinking that it is maybe a little bit salty also if you um, dehydrate celery celery is just naturally higher in sodium or included in your soups or your stews or different things that you're cooking that will just naturally increase the amount of sodium as well as swiss chard because swiss chard is just naturally higher in sodium and so you can chop that up and put that in your stir fries your soups your stews and that will add that little bit of saltiness that we're kind of missing I found the video. And then Mona says that Kathy Hester has some salt blends that you can make. Some salt-free blends. Okay, you found a video. <gasps> it's Tuesday with Tammy. There number you are. 14. Okay. Whole food plant-based serving solutions and Tom's Mexican chopped salad demonstration. So, so it is up there. It's just been a few years since we did it. So, so you can get the full... Uh, view of what that salad is there um, just by searching Tuesday with Tammy number 14 on YouTube okay so firmly planted says I miss oat groats can't find them here nor will customs let me bring them in oh well that's a shame so here in the US we used to be able to get oat groats at our um, bulk section of our Whole Foods they no longer carry them so i do order them from amazon and um, i should have if you go to our amazon affiliate page which there is a link in the show notes and look at our pantry items then you will see now locally here in california winco foods does carry oat groats but they are not organic and um, oats a lot for non-organic oats there is a lot of, um, uh, what's the weed killer, the bad? Um, Glyso glyphosate. Glyphosate. Roundup. Yes, Roundup used on those in the fields. So you really want to get organic oats if you possibly can to avoid all of the pesticides. So, um, so Winco does have them, but they are not organic. But you can get them. Um, for not a bad price on Amazon. And I've had to get different brands of them on Amazon throughout the pandemic, you know, because um, availability comes and goes, it seems. So, and I see Jessie said that she gets them um, online from Purcell Mountain Farms. Good to know. 
yeah, it's, you know, it's nice to um, be able to share where we get things. I know and a lot of people in different parts of the country have difficulty finding like the Hannah sweet potatoes or the Japanese sweet potatoes. Um, they can be called different things. They can be called white sweet potatoes, depending on where you live. Every once in a while on my Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, I will post, you know, where do you find potatoes? Tell us where you live and what stores you go to to find the different types of potatoes. If you have health food stores, check there. And if you have ethnic markets, they oftentimes will have the different sweet potatoes. And if you um, don't have like Asian or Hispanic markets, look at the stores who cater to that population in the area that you live in. Because we have different grocery stores here that if the demographic group near them is, you know, uh, Hispanic or Asian, then they will carry a lot of things for that um, culture's type of food. So I know that we are very blessed here in California that we have such a wide variety of fruits and vegetables at our stores, unlike um, other areas of the country. So um, anyway, I think that's about it. Yeah, um, just to comment back on the, the conversation about live shows. If um, you are, if we do a live show, I will always send an email out either the day of or the day before, like I did yesterday for this morning's show. So, and, and probably many of you here either got a notification from YouTube or perhaps you got our email notification. But if you want to be sure, make sure you're subscribed to nutmegnobook.com uh, because that email is the first notification that goes out. I did see a YouTube thing pop up 30 minutes before this morning when I was setting up on the computer. A little bubble came up and said Nutmeg Notebook's going live in 30 minutes. So you will get those. But if you want to be sure to be notified, then go to the nutmegnobook.com and become an email notification subscriber there. And uh, if you haven't already gotten them, you'll get a, a couple of free recipes as well. So we don't send out a notification when we're going to do a walk and talk, though. No, those are... We, those are spontaneous. We'll right. just get up and say, oh, you know, the weather's decent today. Today'd be a good day mm -hmm. to um, do a walk and talk. That is when we are walking our four-mile morning walk and um, we... Uh, go live at the same time and we take you with us on our walk and yeah. surprisingly enough those are very very popular yeah, and I broadcast on my phone and and then she holds her phone to keep track of what's going on in the chat and to take questions as we go so that's another one of those situations of where we're doing more than one thing at the same time right so right and yeah. that works out really well there's some question about what spread do you use on sandwiches Sharon was asking and um, I like to use hummus so I will make one of my hummuses and then I'll use that as a spread. It can go on with a veggie burger or a bunch of vegetables and it's very, very good. I don't have a published mayonnaise recipe, but I have made it and it's in my, um, in my book. We just haven't gotten it. It's in it. the Nutmeg Notebook. It is. So just so you know, we do have several Nutmeg Notebook notebooks. And that is where, that is where, when I am recipe testing, I write everything down in a notebook, and like it's pretty hilarious for the vegan ranch dressing because it took me almost a year to perfect that one. I have so many different versions of that that I kept trying, and so that's what I do. I write them down in that notebook so that um, I can go back and refer to what didn't work. And try to tweak, tweak it. So I will try to get the my mayonnaise recipe up because it actually I made three different ones the same day, and Tom and I did a taste test, and then picked the one that we liked the best. All three were good though, mm -hmm. but one specifically was the best, and that's been like I don't know six or eight months ago. We yeah, just, so that's just one of those things on the list to to get a blog post up and maybe make a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the kind of stuff we want to keep doing keep doing yeah instead of doing um uh scheduled lives every week we want to work on yeah. content that we can put up for you guys that will be helpful and you know and maybe like once a month or every six weeks or something we can do a live 
And yeah, I mean, we do enjoy a lot. The, these we are, do. These are fun. But it takes Tom about an hour to set up all of the camera equipment, mm -hmm. the computers, our system, mm -hmm. and everything. And then breakdown is another um, yeah. 45 minutes or so. And then you've been plotting and planning on your presentation this morning, since yesterday. Yes. Thinking about what you wanted to Talk share. about, right. It, 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 yeah, so. Although we know that you guys are happy if we just get on and just chat and do a Q&A, but I always feel like I need to give you like some little nugget that's going to help you. Because really our biggest desire is to um, help people be successful at this um, way of eating so that you will have, you know, improved health and live along and healthy life and um, so I always feel like I want to give you some kind of a little um, nugget that will you know spark something in you <laughs> to help you keep going. Randy says I need to work on my setup it shouldn't take that long. <laughs> and, um, there's a little bit of talk about turnips, parsnips, beets and rutabagas. I love rutabagas. Um, they are so delicious. You're right, Jesse, they're not often brought up or talked about, but I like them um, probably as much as potatoes. I got three beets in the fridge that are waiting we need to be spiralized. To, I know, we need to do that. We need to spiralize those. All right, well, I think that that is, I, I'm sorry if I missed any of your questions. I was chatting. Well, they were so, all catching up with each other too. Was, were it, they? The, okay. Yeah. So if Lots there was- a conversation. Thank you for, uh, for everybody that participated in the chat. Thank you, uh, moderators, for- for your participation as well. Right, so we hope that everyone has a wonderful new year. Let me just say that may each day in the new year bring you new opportunities to improve your health, new exciting adventures to broaden your horizons, and many, many moments of joy that will fill your heart. And thank you for joining us today. We want to thank Randy, Gina, and Jesse for being here. Tiffany, we hope that your um, brunch went off and was a huge success, but we know it, it will because you're such an excellent cook. And we just want to wish you all a very happy new year. And um, we'll, we will see you again. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a time. time. We'll see you next time. Uh, watch for the emails. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.